So he's grabbing me by the clothes, but the situations can be different. For example, he can just grab me by the clothes and hold it. But there can also be some force distribution. I mean, he's not just holding me by the clothes, but also tries to pull, shake or push me somewhere. Some force is used here. So he's either pushing or pulling me. Or he can just hold me by the clothes with his arms straight. It's a tough situation, I mean emotionally. It differs when there are some dynamics. In our case it's all static because no force is used. So you can take advantage of many things here and take actions. If the picture changes, so do the priorities. I mean they differ with a static position. We can have a look at a static situation for example and see how it works. So here's a static situation. He's holding me by the clothes. Now I can injure his leg here or his shin. We can also injure his knee or hidden this point or this one. It's not very convenient now to hit at his groin. It's tough to do this. But here's a solar plexus which we can hit with our hands. We can also injure his ears or eyes. A lever can also be useful here but this is all about being static hinders us from understanding the situation itself. Now, dynamics. He's taking some actions in dynamics. The center of the human's mass is in the area of the pelvis, so he's pulling me. My pelvis is pressed and the lever is increased. I mean with my back and all. This results in my inconvenient position. Self-preservation instinct works here, so I can either move aside or tense myself up. Both of which is bad, because in this case we resemble a rigid object, a stick, and we are easy to take control of. Or you should be stronger than him, just to outdo him. At this point we start understanding and feeling what's going on and what hinders us. We understand that the pelvis should be free, I mean, not tensed up. The pelvis acts like a link between legs and torso, so it shouldn't be strained. As soon as we understand that the pelvis should be relaxed, then we can say that 50% of our task is completed. Because we get some freedom from our actions. And when I get this freedom, I make the necessary actions to defeat him before the hold. I mean, I do this before he manages to grab me. My hands are located in one point, we can say that our torso is such a point. And at this very moment when his hands reach me I can wedge them out downwards. I mean, when they aren't yet shaped in a hold. At this point they are flexible and can be influenced. I can deflect them sideways and injure the bridge of his nose or throat. Or grab his hair if he has any. So, I wedge them out downwards and here's a bit of a slant here. I pull one of his arms up and the other one to the side and then unbalance him. But all this happens due to his movements. It's not that I force him to do it, I just try to get him under control and create some slant. One of the legs shifts sideways and with his arm I make him lose his balance. Again he's trying to attack me. He has grabbed me by the clothes and tries to do some further actions. Now we think, what can be done? For example, there is a wall here. You have nowhere to go. First thing you can do is kick him, kick one of his knees, or better, both. Look what happens. I kick his knee, ha, and he's down. I can injure his head and groin. I kick that knee and I hit here. The other leg here. I kick that one but it's not convenient to kick this leg at the same time. Now I use my other leg to kick him from the side, in his knee. By doing this you can make him lose his balance or injure him. Again he's holding me by the clothes. You can press his wrist with your bones. There will be no result if I just hit him like this. So I apply my other hand and make some rubbing motions. If you get no result within a split second, don't waste your time on further actions in this direction. 
If it works out, then there are his eyes. I stick my fingers in his eyes. But you should be ready for this. It's not sports. You can easily cross the line. And then a person may sustain injuries. Plus, women have manicures, nails, so you should be attentive. So if it works out here, I try to bite him and do this. Ha! I sped it up a little. Okay, not sped up, but the situation was favourable for doing this. His hands were close enough to me. Try not to bite just the tissue or the skin, but by the bones. Then the effect will be much better. I wedge him out and push him by the wall. You can use your knees here. As your leg is placed at such an angle, it's also good. You can injure him with it easily. It's placed perfectly for such a hit. He's attacking me. Fingers, I grab his fingers. When they were here, he tried to... Okay, once again. Look, I grabbed them and pushed them downwards. The situation is different here. He's moved aside a little bit. And as he's moved aside, you make him lose his balance. It's like the wheel of a bicycle or a car. To the left, to the right, whatever direction you manage. Or I can do this, but this is just my desire. I see his fingers and want to grab them. But we should also take into consideration force, vector, direction, mass and shape. If we don't consider all this and just try to grab his fingers, then there will be no result. He's attacking me. If I wedge him out, then he flies into me. On one hand it's good, on the other, bad. Bad because if his mass is too great and you're too thin, then you may sustain some injuries. So if we do such a manoeuvre, we need to step aside, to move sideways, because here's the direction along which his mass is moving. So we step aside and leave space for it. For example, you can use an image of a bullfighter. When he creates a false target for a bull with a red piece of cloth. The colour doesn't matter, what is important is the target. The same with you. You act like a bullfighter. I step aside and he flies into the spot where I was before. This is about getting him under control. Again, he's attacking me and I get his head under my armpit and here I used... Okay, enough. I used the same move as we practiced while deflecting side hits. We raise the arms like this. It's the same here. I place both my hands here, just before he has managed to shape a hold, otherwise it'll be too late. I raise them like this. It's like deflecting two side hits at the same time. His arms are straight, and I wedge them out by moving my arms down on top, and then I shift a little bit aside. So, like this. I can use my elbow here. His arm acts like a lever here. You can pull it downwards and move it along the force vector. It's the same here. The elbow's close enough here. That's why it's extremely dangerous for him. If something changes, he'll damage his elbow. This is a large distance for doing this. And he'll need to raise his arm too much in order to hit me. That's why it's so complicated. And now I get him. Ha! into the wall. <coughs> or I can kick him with my legs. I lean against the wall to secure myself. I don't push myself off it. On the contrary, I keep to it. The distance is such that you can take advantage thanks to your legs. And this requires some physical force in order to get it there. Now he gives it up to me. He helps me. Because if a person stands here, you need to hit right there. Now, if we don't hit for real, it's like an imitation of a hit. If he stabs you, then you should hit right here. The distance is short, so you get close to each other. 
Should I do a side hit? It's just for us to have a look at it. It's not simply an elbow hit. We should see how it can be made and what for. It's for a short distance, for a very short distance. Many people don't take this into consideration, especially if there's an obstacle nearby, or they can do it with a large distance. Of course, when the time comes, you'll act according to the situation. But during such training, many people don't pay attention to this. Yeah, you need to reach your target. That's why we look at how it can be done. I can deflect a hit, get it right into my chest, kick his leg or do some other things. A hit can be strong and the mass large, a lever is short. I mean, a hit in this case is extremely strong. He's trying to hit me at this point. He's closed, so to speak. So I let him turn here. I step aside like this. Or I can squat just like this. It's easy to injure now his groin, spleen, kidneys, external or internal hip surface. According to the situation. Or you can move to the side, like this, ha, and here is his leg. The wall helps you to feel stable, it's the third point of support. Our legs, two points on the back, the third one.